Tackle today, the Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading, bringing you all the charts, the news, the analysis, so you can be informed in just a few minutes. Tech outperforming as yields are weighing on your average stock. Some good earnings reports, some not so stellar earnings reports. We're going to break it all down. Matt, when you look at the broad market indices, uh, S&P 500, short-term consolidation, hesitating before a potential breakout. Uh, but we are seeing tech outperform your average stock right now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, you are seeing tech outperform uh, your average stock, but that's not abnormal, uh, especially when you're having a little bit of a yield conversation, which I'm sure you'll talk about here in just one second. Uh, from a pure technical perspective, not a lot of changes here uh, to start the week, quite frankly, on Monday and Tuesday. Not a lot of price, a uh, price action after the actual cash open occurs. Had a doji yesterday right against the top end of the, uh, of the breakout channel. A little bit of a gap down here today, which is understandable, given the fact that yields are are weighing on the stock market right now, or specifically over the last couple of days. And then you also had a little bit of a negative earnings day, specifically in, in Dow components, such as in, uh, such as the industrial space. And so a little bit of a doji here today. But one point technically here that is important, once the 9 EMA does catch up to the high base, and that's kind of what we're seeing here today, you do start to expect a little bit of pricing here. You do start to see, uh, or, or maybe not see, but expect to see uh, buyers step in at that 9 EMA. And so that is one thing that we are seeing here today is that test against the 9 EMA. You had a you had the intraday tested against there yesterday with the doji coming down to on the low price to the 9 EMA. You gap down into the 9 EMA here today. That is a short-term momentum check, and that's where you're really expecting a high base to get broken out of. Now, remember, high bases can turn into something else. You can violate support as easily in a high base as you do violate the resistance level. And so a little, uh, an example of that, for example, you come over to the industrial space here today, that 9 EMA gets broken on a, on a few negative reports out of the industrial space here today, nothing too concerning, but you do change your expectations from a technical perspective from a high base breakout to now tracking a little bit of a bullish retracement, which can get a little bit choppy. And so high bases can be tricky. In the, in, in the sense that they're not a guarantee to break out, no doubt about that. Once that 90 EMA catch up, you do start to start to expect pricing uh, price action to occur. Unfortunately for the industrial space, kissed off the 90 EMA yesterday. Negative news here today. A little bit of a violation of that uh, of that support level. You come over to the rest of the market indexes. The Qs are just hovering right underneath an extremely important breakout channel, right around that 500 level. I would be perfectly fine to consolidate going into earnings next week. When you're looking at the uh, the, uh, the IWM, just a bullish retracement, and this is an interesting pattern here. I did have this slightly overextended going into the breakout. Was expecting a little bit of defense. Defense, if not a pullback coming into the uh, coming into this week, the pullback got sensitive yesterday with that yield conversation. Now we're looking at a little bit of a twenty period moving average test against a bullish uh, retracement type situation. So I, I, I like a increase in support going into that breakout of two twenty five a little bit more than running from two fifteen. So it will be interesting to see if we get a pivot point on the uh, on IWM. Dow Jones, just uh, very simple to understand. Industrials did not come through here today. A little bit of downward pressure in price. Yeah, yields markets are funny markets because the markets will ignore yields for a while and then they'll care about them. But sometimes they only care about them for a day or two, right? And so you let the technicals play out. Uh, trust your eyes on the technicals. Uh, th that becomes especially important in yields uh, dynamics. Uh, not a lot of economic reports today, but we have seen a noticeable shift in odds this week, not at the November meeting. That thing is pretty much locked in in that 90% probability of a cut. But we're starting to see shifts away from that second cut this year. Uh, that has been, you know, it was very noticeable jump yesterday. It's continuing today where markets still saying, yeah, probably a second cut but certainly not as sure as they were, you know, even a few days ago, Matt, uh, you know, you think this becomes a, more of a market story? I, I, I think it has to after the election. I'm not sure it becomes a market story before the election. In, in fact, Janet's going to give a press conference here today. Um, so I'm not sure it becomes a major market story before the, uh, before the election, 
But after the election, you probably do have a yield conversation. And and quite frankly, the economic data has has been pretty good uh, to uh, to to not embrace radical cuts, especially when you have a little bit of slight concern on the inflationary side of the equation. So uh, to me, I, I think this makes a lot of sense to come off uh a little bit of an aggressive expectation on the rate cutting side, given the fact that the economic data has not been supportive of an aggressive rate cutting cycle. And, and that's where the Fed speak has been for a week and a half now. The moderate cuts, yes, cuts are coming, but we probably need to moderate that pace. So I agree with you that post-election, this is become, going to become more of a story. But before the election, we're going to have a whole bunch of earnings and a whole bunch of stocks report, including today. There were a ton today. Matt, what do you have for us? Yeah, there was a lot today. 25 stocks in the S&P 500 just today uh, reporting earnings. And so, yeah, there was, a, there was a lot reporting today. And there's a tremendous amount reporting this week, next week, and the week after that as well. Uh, today, we got uh, a lot of uh, a lot of aerospace and defense, as uh, we expected to come, uh, come again to this week. Uh, before uh, the stocks in the news portion, we got GE, FCX, and General Motors to uh, to tackle 25 stocks in FCX and General Motors. Uh, GE first, though, let's uh, talk a little bit about GE as they come out with 115. Expectation was 113, so a slight beat against EPS. Revenue did beat the expectation. However, they did revenue did go down 43% year over year. It did beat the expectation, but it did go down for 43% year over year. They raised full year guidance by about 2% on the EPS side of the equation for 2025. And so a pretty decent report, but a little bit of a negative environment today on the aerospace and defense companies uh, reporting. On FCX, FCX came out with 30 uh, with an expectation of 38. They did did miss, miss the 40 percent uh, 40 cent expectation revenue came in at six billion that grew 16 percent year over year we'll take a look at their chart fcx does not provide guidance and most likely will go at uh, whatever copper does uh after uh, after we see the actual earnings uh, come out of the pricing in fcx and then on gm here gm had a pretty good report here today when you're looking at that tackle 25 stock they posted a 296 handle the they beat the expectation by over 18 percent they beat on the revenue side of the equation revenue grew at 10 percent year over year they also raised forward-looking guidance by 2.5% on the EPS side of the equation as well. And so GM pulls off the hat trick here today, and that's where we're going to start on the technical side of the equation as GM also follows through with a breakout against a multiple time frame situation. This is an absolute beautiful chart on almost every time frame. You got the breakout on the daily chart. Yeah, you're overextended uh, technically on the breakout. You would certainly be looking for a for a, either a retracement back down to 50 or some degree of high base. The weekly chart, mid-tier breakout on GM, that weekly chart looks absolutely beautiful as well. The investor said, we're ready to rock and roll. We'll see if the traders come through over the next uh, over the next uh, week or two in secondary development on GM. That was a pretty- yeah, That's just a pretty look from a technical perspective. Like, like, like it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a it's it's a really good look. When you're looking at FCX, a little bit of a choppy price action here did gap up, but not not a great report here in general. A little bit of gap up, fading down, still choppy here. Obviously, will be uh, very important to see not only FCX but Southern Copper also reported earnings today. A very similar price response on on on, on Southern Copper that we did on FCX. And then when you look at HG here today, HG just kind of uh, attempting to form a bottom here right around that 50 period moving average as well. And so keep an eye on copper, keep an eye on FCX and on Southern Copper as they probably do start to take on a little bit of whatever copper uh, copper uh, has a tendency to do. And then on GE, a little bit of a gap down and sell down behavior. So it had slowing momentum and trend. And so once that slowing momentum and trend, a little bit of gap down, blows up that technical pattern, which means you take you have a tendency to think about this on a little bit of a longer term chart. Where can it come down into before you start getting into some pretty important support levels? And it's not too far from the current price action. You got this old breakout channel right around the 
activity level. That's right where the 20 period weekly is. If you're looking at GE, that's where I'd be looking at a support level to start going through a little bit of a support build. And that's the thing about technical analysis is it truly does tell you what you need to see next on a simple, uh, on a simple, uh, you know, type of retracement. You're looking for simple pivot actions, a deeper retracement. You're looking for more of a consolidation King's bed analysis on something where you gap down and you give up the 20, the nine and the 50. You need to see the development of a reversal in terms of a short term, uh, short term reversal. And so you definitely need to see a support build, but keep an eye on that 170 level. Yeah, listen, uh, going over to uh, the world of commodities, gold and silver. Listen, we could do a whole uh, tackle today on just gold and silver. I'm sure we're going to spend an extended amount of time in the Trading Justice podcast this weekend. Both, Matt, attempting to extend their uh, breakout levels today. Uh, these are very, very good look. Uh, silver is uh, something that we are really focused on for any secondary pattern. Uh, what's your technical read here? Uh, same on both. Honestly, if you miss the breakout of 2700, you're probably waiting on that next development, uh, developing pattern, whether it's a high base or a pullback, something along those lines. When you're looking at silver here, they had just an absolute, just rock solid, beautiful breakout, very similar to what I would describe General Motors to a certain extent, breaking out of a multiple time frame situation at 32. Not surprised at the momentum here in the silver environment. And we're, we're looking at uh, silver kind of walking up the stairs here when you're looking at the long term you do have a major major resistance level coming really really soon on silver keep an eye on 35 that's that last level right around 35 36 until you start working up until about 40 and so you're definitely looking at secondary it's tough to chase here on silver but uh, a very good breakout recently on silver and we're seeing the continuation of momentum here yeah and the dollar uh the dollar is not a story, but it is a story because it and yields uh, have very similar price movement in recent weeks. And we know yields are becoming a story in the market, whether they stay a story, we'll see in the coming days. But Matt, this thing does not want to stop. The yields do don't want to stop. The two are right now getting linked together. Um, expected hesitancy, at least I did, uh, not seeing that well hesitancy. Not, not in the commodities, we're not seeing the hesitancy and not uh, well, the commodities okay. <laughs> the hesitancy in, in the dollar either. And so, you know, that can't be sustained. And you know, the yield conversation, uh, the market cannot sustain a breakout in a yield conversation. And so, you, you, we obviously know what we need to see, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of alleviate here. And that is that yield conversation. And so it's going to be interesting, but they they certainly are running in tandem. You're seeing the impact on the stock market already. We have not seen the impact on the commodity space. Commodities are, are bucking the yield conversation and the dollar conversation. I don't anticipate that, uh, that, that to last forever. Yeah, the only other chart that, uh, of interest to me this morning, uh, and then we'll close up, is copper. Uh, if you go to copper, the, the news flow out of China continues to be extremely positive, lost in a lot of the other headlines in the busy week so far. Uh, but Matt, this has the look of a bottoming formation to me. What about you? Yeah, bottoming formation. That's why I said keep an eye on FCX and Southern Copper because you do have support starting to build really nicely on uh, on uh, copper itself right around that 4.3 level, which is the uh, which is the 50 period moving average. Got a lot of support underneath that with that uh, 200 day moving average, but on the flip side, 9 EMA working as resistance, 20 SMA is going to work as resistance. A little bit of a challenging environment for copper, but certainly starting to build support here. Now, listen, we're going to have extended conversations on all these subjects, go over many more earnings reports in our Traders Lounge, scout out some trading setups. It's a fantastic way to spend an hour. Uh, you can join us in that Traders Lounge by going to tackletrading.com and signing up for that 15-day free trial.